G'day, fellas, and welcome to game number five of Outback Octagon 2. This is the first game of the second week. I know that's a lot of numbers coming at you guys, but we have got an absolute banger for you, ladies and gentlemen and MBs, this evening. It is going to be incredible. Let's start off with our players spawning in on the east side of the map. In fact, we don't even have all the town centers down just yet. So maybe we wait a little bit longer because they are slowly putting them down. And you will, of course, notice that things are looking a little bit different on this map. This is a brand new map. We are de debuting here today. This is the Blue Mountains. Now, it might not look very blue to you, and that's okay. But uh, I assure you, it is very, very blue. Oh, my God. Look at this over here. All right. Let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. Spawning in on the east side of the map. In the color teal, playing as the Holy Roman Empire. This is Snoopar. To his south, in the color blue, playing as the French. It's Vortex. On the west side of the map, in the color green, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty. Marine Lord. Slightly above him, in the color purple, playing as the Chinese Symptom. To his east, in the color red, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, it's Kasva. Towards his left, in the yellow, on the English, Kapoch. Just above him, in the orange, on the French, it's Zerton. And with one minute remaining, on the color pink, in the north of the map, on the Rus, ladies and gentlemen, it is the one, the only, the Viper! He is back. We got him once again. Week number two, he's here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is him, the snake, the slithering snake. You didn't think we could get him? We got him. That's that's me, Donald Trumping. We got we got players that didn't even play Age of Empires for. Uh, yeah, we, that that's my uh, that's my best Donald impression. Anyway, welcome, welcome. Those are your players. This is your game. We're about to get stuck into it. So let's talk a little bit about the Blue Mountains. If you haven't, if you're not familiar with the Blue Mountains, well, let me let me bring you up to date, up to speed as to how they go. Uh, so there's a lot of sacred sites. You might notice that, and that's why Delhi is actually a really good sieve here. But as you can see, there are no Delis, there's no Delis, there's no Mongols, there's no Ottomans, and there's no Malians. So four sieves we don't have, and we've got a double up of two sieves. We've got two French and, of course, two Abbasid. French are actually pretty damn good in this mode, I feel. Uh, definitely after last week, the French look very strong. So perhaps we see some strength this week, but already we have a bit of an interesting development over here on the west side of the map. As we've got five players, interestingly, four of them seem very evenly spaced out from each other. So back to the Blue Mountains, the idea, the concept behind it, it's based on an actual place uh, in Australia called the Blue Mountains. Uh, and it is a beautiful place, a very uh, forestry, foresty, mountainous place, uh, as the name would uh, would have you know. And uh, there's lots of mountains in the middle of the map, lots of forests in the middle of the map. And uh, most importantly, a lovely stealth forest around the edge of the map. This is enabling players to make moves, make mogul moves on the edge of the map. And another thing to note is that there is not going to be any trade on this map. It is going to be a no trade map. So the only thing that you're going to be able to trade with is the market of a dead player. That's going to be it. So, you know, uh, maybe maybe if Marine Lord goes down, I'm pretty sure you can actually use the, uh, the House of Wisdom as a... As a trading location so who knows maybe the viper sets up a market up here and starts trading down towards that position could be an option for him but we do start to have age ups coming through now i don't, I don't want to jinx the game but i will just let you guys know now if there is a desync uh, we will be uh, restarting the game look at this look at this uh if it's before 20 minutes uh we will we will be restarting the game so hopefully we don't have any desyncs now we've got these guys pretty spaced out as well uh which i do like so th this week we have added in uh, some slightly new rules. So we've said players are allowed to start, well, not allowed to, but will start off with one scout. So you start with three villagers and you get one scout. That's it. And so basically that was designed just to say, okay, you're going to have a scout. That way you can see where your enemies are before you place down that town center. Because there's nothing worse than what happened last week to Beastie. I feel terrible about what happened to him. Um, and I don't want that happening again. 
And so at least we've got a little bit more space between these players now, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be an easy game, especially for people like Kapoch, who is well and truly in the thick of it. We've also got Simtom, who's quite in the thick of it, but Kapoch in particular, he's got three people immediately adjacent to him. And then you've got people like Viper. And Viper's going to have an absolutely cracker of a game, I suspect, here. Mainly because everyone else is going to be so busy dealing with each other. Even over on the east side, you've got these two blue players that are going to be fighting up against each other. He's just going to be sitting there all alone. He's going to have a beautiful game. I think the question's going to be whether he can make it to the late game. Whether he can look to get that Spaskaya Tower up. And whether he can start looking to stonewall the map. Because when it comes to a, a map that you can stonewall on, this is the map to do it. It's a beautiful map. Lots of space on the back of the base, but uh, towards the front, very constricted. So I'm sure he'll have uh, an, a bit of an interesting game, but nonetheless, we move forward. Age ups are coming through. Economic wing going to be coming in now for Casper. Over on the other side of the map, we've got the eco wing also coming through for Marine Lord. Age ups coming through round the clock now. Same time going to be dropping down the Imperial Academy. Not looking to go aggressive on anybody. No Barbican. No, no crackety here. Barbican in the face kind of shenanigans, at least not yet. Fortunately, Simtom, the only Chinese player in the game. Keep in mind that uh, very often, for some reason, there seems to be a lot of Chinese civilizations in these free-for-all games. I don't know how they do it, but they, they I, I think they pray to the RNG gods and they just manage to hit them up. But uh, yeah, they do very, very well. But uh, we already see some early stone being taken here from Vortex. So Vortex and Snooper over on this east side. And keep in mind, Snooper is playing the Holy Roman Empire here, going up against Vortex on the French. So already, not only are you playing against one of the world's best players in Vortex, but you're playing a matchup that is not considered favorable by any means. On top of that, it looks like Snooper doesn't really have a lot of wood out here either. That's his closest wood that he's got, which is pretty far away from the town center. Those knights are going to be on the way soon. Actually, no, not, not, not just yet. Not quite yet. So, anyway, you'll hear the scouts screaming out, calling, calling out. And we'll, we'll ride on board with the Viper as hunting cabins are going to start to come up. And you can see the first one. He's going to be dropped down and Viper actually going to be moving into the Golden Gate. I actually do like this. I think it makes a lot of sense going for the Golden Gate here. He doesn't have anybody close to him. And this will allow him to trade throughout the game for additional stone. Keep in mind, he can use this together with the Spaskaya Tower to be making stone walls basically infinitely because as long as the game goes on, you're going to have more and more tickets. But every 10 minutes, he's going to be getting 1,500 stone. But the age-ups are coming through. Council Hall coming in for Kapoch. Of course, no surprises to see the School of Cavalry coming through as well here for Zertan. He's got a decent little spot here, a little bit of space to the north of him, but definitely not a lot of resources to the north. So... Let's, uh, let's check in now. Over on over on that west side, and you can see villagers starting to move out. What do we have here? Marine Lord needs to be needs to be careful. He got Barbican last week, and it looks like he's going to get Barbican again this week. Marine Lord zero for two on good openings so far, but it looks like villagers are going to get pulled. Marine Lord realizes the seriousness of this situation. Only the four villagers, and he's going to look to rush an outpost as the defense. Keep in mind that there are. Villagers over towards this central location of the map and Kapoch could look to try and put some pressure on early against Casper. Keep in mind there's a lot of AoE 2 players in this game this week. We've got Casper, we got Kapoch, and of course we've got the Viper. Vils jump inside the outpost and already early on Simtom going to be losing some Vils. That's two going down for him. He's going to pull more Vils. That's the third one going to be going down for him. Fourth one almost certainly will go down here. Might even be able to pick up a fifth or a sixth one. Archer joining the fray as well. And that's going to give Marine Lord a great little start here against this aggressive opening that we've seen. Manages to drop all of the Vils and get them out immediately. So it looks like about five workers going down there. Marine Lord going to be really happy with that opening. Managed to get the scout into the outpost as well. Second town center already under construction here for Casper. And indeed, we do see the Longbowmen chasing back these early villagers. Casper going to have a lot of space here to expand into the center of the map. I'm curious to see exactly how he looks to perform. Now, in addition uh, to the scout change, there's also been another change this week. So, emplacements have also been changed around. So, last week, emplacements were double the cost for everybody. Well, it's not the case anymore. All emplacements are the exact same cost, except... For cannon emplacement. So that means your arrow slits are the same. Your sprinkled emplacements are the same. Um, the only difference is your cannon emplacements, which are double. But that's only for civilizations that aren't the Mongols. Actually, how do I say that? That's for every civ but the Mongols. Let, let's go with that. So every single civilization except the Mongols gets cannon emplacements double cost. The Mongols, however, they, do, they don't. The, the Mongol cannon emplacements are the same cost 
uh, as the base game, or I guess as the, the OG game. And so that means that they've got an ability to, to be a little bit defensive in the event somebody gets them. And then, you, you know, maybe you want to build a wonder or something like that. So let's take a look over towards this east side of the map. Third town center coming up for Vortex at the moment. He's expanding like a madman. And compare that to uh, to Snooper over here, who's doing a little bit of snooping, moving out now with the prelates. And I'm curious exactly what they know. Now, I'm not going to jump into our uh, our uh, line of sight mode, so be just simply because of how laggy it can be. But look at this. Two prelates already starting to move out. And they, these extra town centers have been spotted out. Now, he's going into Regnitz Cathedral, which is definitely the right call, especially for a free-for-all. You can go Burgrave, pick yourself up a couple of early points. Uh, but in the event that you do that, you're going to be really letting yourself down for the rest of the game. So I think it's wise to move out, start taking as many relics as you possibly can. That's exactly what he looks to do. So Marine Lord now adding in the second town center, dealing well with the Barbican Rush. Just kind of keeps his keeps his opponent at bay. Second TC's coming up for a lot of these players. Everybody moving into a more economic focused game. Right on board with the Viper as well as he has already aged up well and truly. Take a look at that. Viper actually is, is he the first one to age up? I think he might be. Snooper comes up behind him and says, hello, you're in Castle H, me too. But keep in mind, Snooper's already out on the field and Snooper's pretty close to adjacent to him. So Viper's got, got a couple of relics that he's going to be able to snag safely. But ideally, he'd love to get out here towards the middle of the map and look to pick up a couple of these now, keep in mind that uh, we've got further expansions coming through. Casper doing work right now. So I think we might ride on the perspective of the Viper. Let me bring him on board just because he's going to be, I suspect, a little bit quiet. And hold on a minute. We've got Knight's action early on. Zertan coming through. Trying to deny the age up of Kaporch. Not going to happen. Those villagers do jump inside the King's Palace. Keep themselves alive a little bit longer. He loses a couple of vills there, but manages to keep his head above water. And we do see that the Longbow has come out and denied this wall from, from coming through. So maybe a little bit of aggression here up against his immediate neighbor in the north. Let's check in over with uh, with Snooper. And we have a double stable coming in. Night production has begun. And I suspect we're probably going to have a Castle Age coming through really soon from Vortex. Uh, you can see that he, he's working towards it with the resources that he's got. The three town centers in particular really insulates him quite well uh, against, uh, against the, the late game. We'll check in over on that north side as Knight's now coming in under the town center. Double Rack's going to get thrown down from Kapoch. And not a whole lot of early aggression this game. This is something that I suspected would happen on this map. Just simply because of the forests. Just simply because of the extra little bit of, uh, of cliffs that you've got. It's not an open map. It's not like a dry Arabia. It's not like your uh, Uluru. Even though Uluru is somewhat closed off. Uh, it, it is still very, very open towards the edges, towards the center. Whereas on this map, it is very, very different. And now Viper going to start moving in. Looking to pick up the first relic. He's got a couple horsemen chasing him. Could go for a wall of lol here at the very least to try and deny this out. Let's see what he does. Villagers are in here. Viper going to be spotting out a couple of villagers. One in the middle might, might be going down. Indeed, he manages to take it. Horseman's going to make a decision. Do I go after the warrior monk? Do I go after the villager? It looks like they're going to follow the warrior monk, but he'll move it a little bit closer towards his position. Stable's going to start coming down now for the Viper and a second TC together with a monastery. This guy is serious about relics, but unfortunately is going to miss out on this third relic. Over towards that east side, though. Still no action just yet. Snooper starting to move out with knights, and we see him actually hitting some pretty big raids, and he's hit the enemy gold. Now, there is secondary gold that he's going to be able to go for, and so I do want to apologize if I miss action. There, there is going to be a lot of action happening. It's hard for me to track everything, and unfortunately, we don't have our observer. Uh, well, I, I, I am the observer, so if, if you do see something happening on the minimap, make sure you mention it in the Twitch chat, and, uh, and... And, uh, yeah, I'll make, I'll make sure I try and cover it. But we do see. So just the second TC up here for the Viper. Hunting cabin on 28 gold a minute. Nothing too crazy just yet. But Knight's looking to already take over this game. And so far, I'm loving the fact that Casper's just in the center. Hasn't really made any enemies just yet. But definitely has, uh, <laughs> has got someone in mind that he wants to be focusing on. Someone that we identified early on, Kapoch as being in a bit of a tough spot here. Now, fortunately, he's got a lot of space between him and his allies, uh, but he, he's still struggling. That That is for sure, because the battering rams are coming through now, and the town center is going to be threatened here. It's just going to be a feudal age attack. So men at arms could definitely threaten this army, and he does have the double barracks coming out. So I expect to probably see men at arms coming out from Kapoch. Over on that east side of the map, we can see the knight still causing havoc over here. And you can see that, that Vortex is trying to get gold from every single angle. 
but unable to do that. And big raids coming in in a matchup that is considered very, very difficult. Snooper seems to have found a window. Perhaps in the one versus one world, three town center on the French is not so normal. Whereas in, uh, in free for all, it is. The main problem that you're going to have is going 3TC in, in that kind of environment. Not going to be particularly helpful. Spearman doing a decent job of holding all of these units. And we will see that the landmark town center going to be coming down now. Marine Lord heading up to the Castle Age as well. He's on four town centers for the moment. He's going to be going up with the Culture Wing and back towards the base of Kapoach. He's under early pressure. The Landmark manages to stay alive, though. He keeps it alive. The Battering Rams are repelled. And he heads back to the drawing board, Casper does. But keep in mind, he's got plenty of town centers here. He is scaling into the late game. Now, another thing that we haven't really spoke much about are the Sacred Sites. Sacred Sites on this map... Probably a little bit less likely to go to have your sacred victory. Walla lol attempt in the north. Viper not going to be able to find it. No connection up there. Does move the relic a little bit closer. Now sacred sites. We've got one sacred site. We've got two sacred sites. we got three sacred sites down the south. we got one up in the north. That's four. we got a fifth one. we got a sixth one. And I think there should be a seventh one somewhere. Maybe it didn't spawn. Sometimes it doesn't spawn, and that's okay. It's it's hard to get it exactly perfect every time. You know, e even on Altai, a map that's uh, that's made by the by the devs uh, and and you know ready for the rank ladder map and or ma ready for the rank ladder doesn't always spawn the sacred site. So it can be a bit tough. But Viper gonna be the first one to capture a sacred site here and begin that trickle. And look at this. <laughs> we got Casper just picking fights with everybody now. He started off... I, I think his enemy this game is going to be the town center. So we've seen him take out the King's Palace. Now he looks towards Zertan and says, actually, you're going to be my next target. Zertan reaches the Castle Age behind this. And it's going to be Royal Institute that he opts for. Very interesting choice to go for Royal Institute, especially in the free-for-all. Over towards that east side of the map, though, the night numbers are starting to build up. Wallalol once again on that north side. Viper looking to protect the Worry Monk. He will find the protection as well. But at the same time, more aggression coming through. Marine Lord going to start aging up. And we see a battering ram coming, a push coming in now on that south side as well. There are rams attacking everybody. Action all over this map right now. Trying his hardest to hold on. Zertan looking to defend with the Knights looking for a couple of upgrades. We see he's picking up his veterancy on the Royal Knights. Should find good connections here. There's the veterancy coming through now. A lot of damage to those battering rams. We'll head back over to the east side of the map and check in with Vortex. Going up against Snooper. Snooper could be looking for Imperial Age very shortly. Currently sitting in Age 3. We know he's got at least those two relics. Three relics in the bag. Now, how many does he have? Yeah, he's got three relics in the bag. Viper sitting on three relics as well. And that big push is really happening right now. You can see how aggressive Casper is being here, realizing that Zertan is a major threat here on the French. Obviously someone who, who did very well last week on the French civilization and looks to try and take him out before he can really start that steam ball, that, that steam ball rolling. And the king! Oh, Marine Lord's king's on the ground. He manages to chase away the king. He looks to head to another castle, the town center. Gonna try and repair it up. He's up against four battering rams. Camels, together with the Lancers, looking like they're going to be able to clean up the Rams and the Town Center stays alive. Marine Lord keeps his head above water a little bit longer. We head back towards that top side. The King is still inside the Town Center. We've got solid defenses coming in from both of these players at this point. Keep in mind, throughout this, Kapoch bides his time. Town Center lives on a little bit longer. Zertan manages to take out all the Rams. How, what's his village account like? 41 villagers up against Casper on 80. So Casper double the village account at the moment. Over on that east side, though, once again, the night numbers are starting to build. Snooper on 35 villagers up against Vortex on 96 villagers. So a huge difference there between the two. Snooper ideally needs to get to that Imperial Age, but of course, fighting up against someone with such a, a significant uh, economic advantage is going to be incredibly difficult to overcome, especially this early on. But uh, we now start to see more expansions and... Really, <laughs> you've got someone in the middle of the map who doesn't really care about where he expands to. He's just going absolutely ham, throwing down plenty of farms. Of course, it's Casper. He's going crazy. A little bit of raids around the backside and Marine Lord trying to find a way through. Simtom aging up now, hitting the Castle Age. Beautiful big base he's got here for himself. And we'll ride on board now with the Viper up towards the north as he begins pushing towards his first target. It's going to be Zertan, somebody who's already in a bit of a tough spot course viper look to try and snag away those relics and take a look at that viper sitting on five relics huge amount of relics here there's still a couple left out on the map one two down towards the south and viper now starting to put on the pressure keep in mind there is a new rule this week surrendering is not permitted not permitted at all you're not permitted to surrender unless there are two people remaining in the game 
Speaking of two people, over on this east side of the map, Vortex is looking to try and take Snooper out. Snooper has stalled out on the economy. He's down to 30 villagers. He's definitely lost a few. And now, now he's going to be in trouble because the... The French enemy has aged up to the castle age. He's managed to find gold. He's got veterans he threw for his royal knights. And I suspect, has he moved into the guild hall? He's moved into the royal institute as well. So he's picked up royal, royal bloodlines. And now those knights are going to have a lot more health than what he can deal with. Viper putting on the hurt. Looks like the king may have evacuated. King has indeed evacuated. He's looking to throw down a poor man's keep towards that backside of the, the base. We'll need to make sure he's popping out the king. Constantly getting reads on the location of the king. You can always send those knights in. Move them over towards that position. We, we don't see the king is out just yet. He's definitely looking to put pressure on. At the same time towards that south side. Marine Lord now going to be taking out enemy Barbican. Over on the east side. The king. Where is the king actually? King's on the move. King is on the move. Snooper now moving out with the king. He's got walls up. So he's going to be able to buy himself a little bit of time here. Can always fall back to an outpost. Potentially manages to get through the gates and lives a little bit longer. At the same time, Viper is making a break towards that king. No, where is the king? Where is the king? The king is on the ground. There is a king somewhere right now. The king, the king is safe. 425 health. A lot of units here. Battering rams working down, to, down that town center. We got kings on the ground everywhere right now. And an escape is happening. Vortex is going to be looking to chase that. At the same time, all those units out towards that east, that west side. Where is the king? Oh, the king's in an outpost. I think the king's gone inside an outpost. He's nice and safe. And he goes for a, He's going for a keep. Looking to put the keep down on the sacred site. Keep himself alive a little bit longer. Trying our best to... To, to keep up with all of the action. And now, look at Viper. Viper knows where the king is. Viper knows where the king is. He's coming in for the first blood. Viper right now could be looking. The king drops onto the ground. Viper, he's got to be careful. He's got to watch that king. He's got the ability to have movement speed. He could look to pop it. And of course, Zertan is running. He's trying his best to gun it. He's going to look to loop back around towards the town center. Villagers jump out. Vortex gets assassinated. Over on the east side, we've missed it out. Or rather, Snooper gets assassinated. Vortex able to take him out. That first kill that the keep not going to happen in time. Managed to break through that gate. We head back over towards the west side. We've missed one king kill. We don't want to miss another one. And fortunately, Viper unable to, to really push any further onto this town center. But hold your, hold your horses. All the army's dead now. And Viper is looking to work through this town center. And match out Vortex over on that east side of the map. So slowly but steadily, it looks like the east side is going to be taking over the west side. You know, they always say that, that the west side is the best side. But it seems like this game, well, it might be different. The king on the ground. King on the ground. Viper looking to try and find it. Pops the movement speed. Heads over to the west side. Does he have much out here? He's got a gate. He's got a gate. He's got an ability to hit that gate. Movement speed will come through. Be able to keep it alive a little bit longer. Could be. Oh, this is terrible. Viper now caught on the wrong side of it. And you can see that he's trying to bait. Oh, there's a chop through. It doesn't matter. He's chopped through. He's over chopped. And the king runs out of movement speed. Viper, will he be able to find the king? He's looking. He's into the stealth forest. Deletes the wall on the north side. He's going to try and loop it back around. Zertan eluding, escaping. And more knights now moving up towards that position. He's going to spot it, but the, the outpost is there. He should be able to survive a little bit longer. The king's inside. He lives the sneaky little snake out, slithers the viper. Oh, poor little viper. He's trying, but oh, <laughs> not for long, not for long. East side, viper now losing out on that sacred site. Vortex making a powerful enemy here as the king is finally going down. Good night, Zertan. It was a pleasure watching your fight, but unfortunately, the Viper comes for blood, and he finds it, taking the second kill of the game, assassinating Zerden, and pushing himself to 250 population max. Now towards the center of the map, we've got more action as Kapoch looks to resume his war against Kasper. Kasper gets the keep up. And now towards the south side. Have we got aggression down here? We got double trebuchet. We got more keeps. And we've got we've got someone taking over the center of the map. Vortex doing a great job. Imperial Age coming through now for Marine Lord. He's going to be the first one hitting Imperial this game. Keep in mind he's playing the Abbasid Dynasty. One of the most powerful Imperial civilizations that there are. A civilization that we've seen successful last week. We saw Urk do incredibly well with the civilization last week. And of course, this week with Marine Lord on the, on the pilot... You suspect it will probably be going the same. Manganel almost going to be going down, but manages to stay alive just. Casper keeping it alive. And he's going to be looking to really push here. Try and find that king and take it out. Where is that king, though? That's going to be the question. Looks like he's keeping it safe at the back of the base. A single outpost. This is this is ripe for the snipe. I'm telling you right now. Watch out. This, this outpost sits here. Kapoch just minding his own business. He's got a lot to worry about. Viper, though, over on the east side. 
Looks like Vortex has picked picked a fight. We've got two Vs going up against each other. The Viper, the Vortex, looking to take each other on. But Viper says, oh, hold on, Vortex. I, I got a little bit of something, something to do over here. Don't mind me. Starting to clean up the villagers. Runs in towards the enemy va base. Viper also hits the Imperial Age. Does he go with the Spaskaya Tower? He does. And he unlocks stone walls for himself. Keep in mind, he should have plenty of tickets here on the Golden Gate. Seven tickets in total. That's more than a thousand. Actually, yeah, almost. No, it is. It's a thousand stone that he could potentially trade out. Now up to eight tickets. So Viper having himself a very nice time. And really, Casper looking to put on a lot of hurt in the middle of the map here. Keep in mind, he's got plenty of villagers out here for the taking. So the question is going to be whether Vortex looks, to, uh, looks to, to go with such a strategy. This game, obviously, playing as the French, a civilization that really excels in this game mode once the late game comes. Because in this game mode... Oh, the king. The king, the king is on the move. The king is on the move. Cowpoach looks to sneak the king out along the bottom side and hope that Marine Lord does not press the button. If Marine Lord presses the button, there's going to be trouble in paradise. Is he on? Oh, he's on the chase. He's on the chase. No, he's not on the chase. It's just villagers. And now Viper looking to come around the backside. You can see Viper knows. Viper knows. He knows where the king was. And now Vortex hits the Imperial Age. The push is coming in from the top side. And look at this. Everybody looking for the king all of a sudden. They've got to press that button. They've got to find where is the king? Where is he? Spirit way in the back here. Simtom reaching the Imperial Age as well. He's going to need to defend on this position. Keep in mind, he's fighting, trying his best to hold on against Marine Lord. Marine Lord pushing forward with the elite archers. Apologies for not really showing much of this battle. We've had so much action on this top side, but no real kings in play on that, that top position. And look at this little sneaky king. He's got a couple of villagers here with him. He could look to wall himself in, maybe keep himself a little bit safer. Jukunu now going to start pushing out. He's got elite upgrades on these Jukunu. Once he picks up incendiary arrows, it's going to be a different story with these units. But Kapocha's base at the moment pretty much non-existent. He's down to 41 villagers, manages to evacuate towards the top side. And look at this. We've got Kasper now sneaking in the backside. And he says, actually, Simtom, I kind of like your base as well. Kasper. I've, I remember watching him in Outback Octagon number one. And he went absolutely huge. He took out two players in a 2v1. Let's do a little bit of a king assessment. Let's see where the kings are at. Let's get a bit of an idea on where they where they are. First king for Vortex. It's over here in the town center. Nice and safe. The Viper. He's running his t king also in the town center. Nice and safe. Of course, Kapoch. His king is on the move. Oh, no! Kapoch! The elite horsemen making their way down. Marine Lord looking to pick off the king from Kapoch. He snuck it around the outside. Viper came in for it. Casper was looking for it. He gets the surround. He doesn't pop the movement speed because he didn't know. And even if he did, it's not going to matter. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine Lord assassinates Kapoch and says, Good night, sweet prince. It was a pleasure dealing with you. And Simtom sneaks over towards the west side. Puts himself up a little bit of a safety net question is going to be whether he can get the king there and even if he can how much longer can he survive and is it really going to matter that much but look at this we've got a king snipe attempt we were talking about the king where's the king in the middle of the base Casper under pressure here as a lot of knights begin to come through they've got their elite upgrades almost fully upgraded just needs the armor upgrades and now monks towards the south side We're going to be looking to put on the pressure on those sacred sites we'll ride on board with Casper and see if we can locate that king imperial age comes through there's the king sitting safely inside a keep with plenty of farms around it. Marine Lord will check in with his king. It's going to be probably in that keep towards the front. No, it's in it's in the main town center. And then the last keep king is going to be from Simtom, which is inside his town center. But he's under pressure. He's under a lot of pressure. Marine Lord looking really solid as this game begins to set up for the late game. we got three players. One in each corner that is starting to look stronger than ever. Viper in the north of the map. Still yet to start building those walls up. He's got plenty of resources to do it. 1,100 stone. Wouldn't be surprised if he just draws in a nice big stone wall on this east flank. Keeps himself a little bit safe. Down towards the south side, though. Look at the size of that. Look at the size of that army right there. How do you even deal with this, right? You're talking 73 elite royal knights. Maybe camels? Camels could probably work for you. Maybe if you're spamming out camels, then maybe you might be able to break even. But keep in mind, that's a lot of knights. That's a huge amount of knights. And now we start to see those elite upgrades coming through for Marine Lord. King is slowly but steadily sneaking across that top side. Simtom looking to run the king out there. Marine Lord, does he spot it? Does he spot it? He's got 
He's got horsemen on the move. He's got a horseman on the move. Oh, he's got everything on the move. He knows where the king is. The king making a run for it now. Sim Tom going to be trying to get towards those stone wall gates. If he's able to get inside, he might be able to keep his king alive. And you can see the block's going to come through. He's heading towards the front door. Marine Lord looks to surround the king. Oh, but the king breaks through. He jukes left, jukes right, and he's inside the keep. But the question's going to be for how much longer Marine Lord is looming towards that top side, though. More attacks happening. The Camels have got their elite upgrades, but look at this. The King's on the run. He's going for a bit of a quick wall. Don't wall yourself out, though, Casper. He tries his best. The King breaks through, but he is surrounded. Casper needs to find a town center to get to. He's got one towards the top side. 575 health. More spears going to be coming through. He looks to try and keep it alive. Manages to get the king in. But there are many kings that are currently under threat. And this one in particular is looking like it might be going down and pops the king out the top side. Tries to bait around a couple units. The vipers look. Ah, the king gets sniped. Vortex assassinates Casper in a terrible move right there. He just needed to keep the king in alive a little bit longer. But there's just there were no units there for Casper, unfortunately. And Vortex takes out a second player this game. And now there is only four that remain. And one of which, well, how do I say this kindly? Doesn't look too long for this world. The French are really stacking up to be one of those civilizations you do not want to mess with in free for all. They managed to get this roll on early and then capitalize in the late game. Just mass knights coming up everywhere. If there's one thing I'd love to see from the Viper, it's the utilization of the Spaskaya Tower in, with those stone walls. Remember that the Spaskaya Tower allows you actually i just realized we, we probably should have popped that chat down let's get that chat down a little bit further uh the spaskaya tower ideally should should be uh used to to get those stone walls out we can see the kings all getting popped out marine lord gonna be moving his to a bit of a safer position and now that king oh sim tom did go for a bit of a king move he's not gonna be able to find it though and unfortunately the movement's not gonna be there and it looks like marine lord gonna be taking out another player so that's gonna be two for marine lord and then there were three. Three remain. The Viper in the north. King safe inside the town center. Over on the east side. Also, King safe inside the town center. It's Vortex. And finally, on the west side. King, once again, safe inside the town center. Marine Lord. Three remaining players. A distinct lack of walls. Where do we go from here? We'll check in. Oh my god. That, 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 that's, that's a concerning amount of knights. That, that is a serious amount of knights. That is, that is a problematic amount of knights. I, there's a part of me that thinks that there is no amount of keeps that is going to save you from this many knights. Where is the Viper's army? He's got spears. He's got streltsy. He's got knights. He's got everybody moving into position. He's sitting at 227 population at the moment. 136 villagers 102 military and w within what three snipes right there all of the knights able to take down the keep viper making his way over towards this east side still a lack a distinct lack of stone walls coming in for him strelty firing off there's a lot of a lot of units here for him i don't know how it's gonna go though viper gonna be trying his best to hold on for dear life Cannons coming up the rear. More reinforcements coming through for the Viper. Snake looking to hold on a little bit longer. Streltsy together with the Spears. These guys have got their upgrades through. Fully upgraded. Plus sixes, plus threes. Beautiful numbers. But look at the surround coming through right now. Vortex just taking Viper to school. He says, hey, mate, you want to see how a real gamer plays? Take a look at this. And the Streltsy going to be trying to back off here up against these elite royal knights. But you can just see how powerful the French is in the late game. Triple town center early on going to be able to convert plenty of of ec economy into this huge military that is being fielded right now. And the question is going to be, where is Marine Lord? What is he doing? He's starting to wall up himself, looking to king keep that king safe. Viper's king still somewhat exposed in that town center. He manages to hold on. Viper, an absolute goat right now, holding on for dear life. Now, just quickly, we're going to follow along with this knight in particular. I'm going to fix something up. Give me a second over here. I just got to make sure that this is the correct chat. There we go. Hopefully, okay. There we go. Now, now chat should be on the screen. Apologies that it wasn't. Nice little surround here in the middle. Viper going to try and take out... How, how many villagers does it take to screw in a royal knight? How many have we got? We got 21. It's taken out a few. Now, fortunately, it doesn't heal in the battle. But at least he's going to be able to keep it 
going to keep it steady here for the moment while the Streltsian Spears come to reinforce. Now, one thing to note, Vortex is taking Sacred Sites. And there's a lot of Sacred Sites on this map. He's taken four so far. There's a fifth one down here. A sixth one. And of course, there was a seventh one. No, I don't think there is a seventh one. But he's taken four out of the six. He could look for a potential Sacred Victory here. He could go keeps on the bottom, units on the top. And now Marine Lord just going to be biding his time. A lot of siege over here. Remember, he's up to 300 maximum population. Vortex also max 300 population here. Viper on the north side, though. And we can see the trade has already begun. Viper finds the market of his enemy and says, I've actually got a way to get infinite gold. It's only 68 gold to trade, but it's honest work. And now Viper pushing through the middle of the map here. Something very... This, this is incredibly dangerous, what Viper's doing right now. He's pushing out with all of his army against a cavalry civilization. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at it. Oh, I don't want to look at it. Oh god. Oh my god. If, if, it, if there is one thing that makes me want to change the rules of, of how many population points you get when you kill a king, it's this. It is the... Oh my god. It's disgusting. Oh god. There's so many knights. 137 knights. And he's not even... This isn't even his final form. And I, th I think the part that hurts the most is... is like, v Viper's pushing out with Spears and Streltsy, but, it, you know, he's pushing out with 79 units. And he's like, yeah, this is a big, this is a big army. This, this, this is a huge army. It's like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I don't want to look at it. I don't want... <laughs> right now, I just want to put my head in the sand and be like, that's not... French royal knights aren't real and can't hurt me. Streltsy, he spots them. Viper now on the run. There's so many knights. There are so many knights. Oh my lord, I would be surprised if he loses more than four knights right here. He just has such a huge mass. Spears on the front, gonna be able to hold it off, and the Streltsy gonna try and look to get out of here. Sacred Sites are getting captured up behind this. Marine Lord, he's on the move as well. Is he, Do I sense a sniper attempt coming through? Elite horsemen making their way downtown, walking fast. But the question's gonna be whether it's fast or not. It's definitely a little bit less than a thousand miles, that is for sure. Streltsy peeling off. And I think the most important thing that Viper's doing right now is just keeping tabs on this army. This is the biggest threat right now in this game. The big thing for me, though, is Viper needs to wall. He needs to wall. He, ne he needs a way to stop that that army from just running by and killing him. Because in, in the split second, everything can go, go south. Now, of course, he's got the ability to run, but... Oh, man. How are you going to outrun knights like this? Look at this. Streltsy. And the spear's just getting surrounded. He's got a couple Springles here looking to try and help out. Villagers also just going to get picked apart here. Viper struggling, but at the same time, we've got ourselves a sniper attempt, ladies and gentlemen. Where is the king? Where is the king? The king is on the move. Oh, the king is on the move. Oh, it's danger. There's danger right now in Paradise. Marine Lord knows exactly where the king is. Viper, he's fighting up against an enemy. He's keeping him busy. At the same time, we see a whole bunch of knights now going to be falling back. The king! Oh, no! Vortex! Vortex, no! Vortex, no! Marine Lord, how much longer does he have on that ability? You can see the king sitting out there. He's made a run for it. Vortex, the consequence of not securing securing the king is that even if you put yourself into a game winning position marine lord just comes and says your brain is big but mine is bigger oh but the king jukes the king jukes oh but he doesn't find it he gets the surround he's trying to look for the surround king slowly but steadily looking to escape through the surround comes through it's gonna be good game vortex the favorite for the winning in this game gets neutralized and then there was two marine lord takes out vortex in a foul swoop like a terrible tale I can't believe that it's twisted this way. Insane snipe coming out there for Marine Lord and definitely a contender for best king snipe. Wow. Up against a undoubtedly somebody who is in prime position right there. Without a doubt, Vortex w was looking like 70 to 80% win chance in this game. He's playing the French. He just goes in, does his snipe, gets out. Wow. Wow. Now, there are two. Arguably, not even arguably, objectively, two of the greatest Age of Empires 4 players of all time. For anybody unfamiliar with the snake in the north side of the map, the victor of Genesis, the very first S tier Age of Empires 4 tournament. He took out the Mister in a best of, I think it was a best of nine series. Of course, that famous game on Hill and Dale. Well, well, well. If it isn't. 
the good old friend. Marine Lord is building a wonder. We are here. So, let's talk a little bit about the situation that we're in right now. Marine Lord's building a wonder, and he's got a maximum population of 350. The Viper has got a maximum population of 250. He's going to have to push across the map. He's going to have to kill this wonder. Now, keep in mind, it's 15 minutes from when this gets placed down. But what this says to me is that Marine Lord, he's confident with his position. Very confident with his position. And he's basically saying, come and, come and attack me. If you, if you, can, if you, can, if you can kill me, I'm, I'll be impressed. That's what he's saying here. So Viper's got a couple of options as to how he looks to take this game. Number one, King Snipe. That's always going to be a threat. Number two, could go for a Sacred Victory. This is an option open to him. And we can see he is taking Sacred Sites. He's picked up three so far. A further three de available down towards the south side. Definitely going to be a bit tough. You can see Marine Lord's actually got the trade going as well. Where is Marine Lord trading to? Marine Lord's actually trading with... What is Marine Lord? Oh, he's, oh, he's found a whole bunch of markets over here. Look at this. He's Oh, no, it's just the one market. He's found the one market, and he's built everything there. That's a lot of Streltsy. I see that many Streltsy. I'm like, eh, just make a Mangonel. You'll be fine, Marine Lord. A single Mangonel. Well, it is that time of the day, ladies and gentlemen. This is your prayer hall of Ukba. And the Viper is going to have to deal with it. This landmark calls for a sniper. And I can't think of anybody better than the adequately named the Viper. That's a big army, though. Now, keep in mind, Surrender is now in play, okay? If, if one of these players feels that their position is not uh, a tenable position, the Surrender is, is possible. Uh, because we, we do allow surrender in the event that there is just two players remaining in the game because we, we appreciate that look we don't want to drag the game out for another 55 minutes if Viper never thinks he can break through this but let's focus a little bit more now because we've got beautiful Micro coming in from Marine Lord Springles on the backside. Viper going to be looking to move forward and take out the Mangonels. Got to be careful Mangonel big shots from the top rope coming through a lot of damage out right now but all the Streltsy looking like they're staying alive Springled Micro is very solid from the Viper but the numbers here Managing to maintain a lot of horsemen coming out from Marine Lord. Reinforcements looking to come through. He's pumping out the, the units. But Viper holding strong. He's dropped down a keep as well. He's going to have more and more reinforcements. Manganel still on the backside. Battering Ram's going to begin to move forward. Camel Archers are out here. But Viper does lose out on this position. Marine Lord holds on. A lot of hand cannoneers as well. You can hear all the units being produced. The consequence of being the attacker is that your units are a little bit further away that your reinforcements are so much slower to come through. And whereas Marine Lord, well, he just says, well, the fight was right here at my base. And now Viper's in a really tough spot. So if, I, if I'm Viper right now, I, I, I'm thinking I've got to be sneaky, right? Like fighting into an Abbasid player like this, it's really hard. Knowing that he's got that extra population, there's a part of me that just thinks, maybe just go for like a crazy kind of snipe. Maybe that's the way to do it. But then you look at Marine Lord, this guy's got line of sight everywhere. There's no way you're sneaking anything by this guy. Unless Viper somehow... Unless Viper somehow... What do we got down here? We got no Vils. We do have one Vil. And Marine Lord does have vision on it. But this villager... If it makes it past... It could potentially make it... Oh, there's so much line of sight. There's no way it comes through unnoticed. 100% he notices this. I think that there, there is probably a world where you could go for some type of snipe. Maybe like a whole bunch of rams could work. Potentially. But Viper's in a real uphill battle here. He's got trade going, but Marine Lord's got better trade going. He's, got, he's, he's making more than three times the amount that Viper's making. So he's got the trade really popping off. 182 vils. Just kind of sits here. Holds out for the moment. Prayer Hall of Ukbar is here. You know we got to get a picture of that for the for the front page. Marine Lord looking very solid on this wonder defense. Keep in mind, we've got a couple of special prizes that will get awarded to players throughout this tournament, irrespective of whether they win the game. Best King Snipe. Best Wonder Defense. Defense, rather. Best Sacred Defense. Best Sacred Side Defense. Best Comeback. And Best Clutch Play. Now we hear deleting happening behind the scenes. Viper's down to 76 vils. Starting to push out. Down to 60 vils. He's going for it. He's going for it. 
If he can get to critical mass here, if he can get to 250, population, look, down to 44 vils. Everything's getting deleted. He realizes, this is it. This is my time. 11 minutes to go for Marine Lord. So Viper says, I've got one chance. I'm going to make a death push. The Viper is making a death push. This is it. A, a What appears to be a final death push. You can hear the vils still being deleted. He's down to 38 vils. He wants to max out. My, I think he's completely deleted the traders. It's only a couple of wood vils that remain. Sitting on about 12k resources, so got more than enough. I think for me, I'd love to see from Viper. Just a big push out. Lots of streltsy, lots of spears. And plenty of wood in the bank so that he can build battering rams. Because once those units die, you want to replace with battering rams on the front line. And then you can start tearing through the production. Let's take a look at the production and see how much production Marine Lord's got. Oh, oh he's got... He's, it's, a, it's a little bit of production. A little bit. S small amount. A small amount of production from my father. Viper now down to zero vils. Not, not something you expect to see, right? Viper sitting on zero villages. Normally you expect to see that when someone's dying. But right now, he's preparing. This is probably the largest attack I've ever seen. It's, it's almost akin to a kamikaze attack, right? Viper wants this kill so badly, he deletes everything. Does he have any warrior monks in here? No warrior monks. A little bit of an oversight from Viper. Obviously, it's been some time since he's touched Age of Empires 4. And neglecting the warrior monk here can be quite big. They do offer a lot of, uh, of utility. You can see he's still got the warrior monk back here. Just one single stab from a warrior monk gives you a great position. Now, how many mangonels are out? Looks like three mangonels. Definitely enough mangonels to cause some pain. Nine minutes for Marine Lord. He's got a lot of resources in the bank. Obviously going to be stacking up plenty of, uh, of units ready to come out. And the culverin going to be moving forward here. Keep in mind, Viper does have those 12 range Springles. He's got to be careful here. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's time. Viper now looking to push in. Springles on the front line, looking to pick off the enemy siege. You're going to be able to find it. Slowly but steadily moving forward. The siege on the back line. Trebuchet's not in the best position. Mangonel's also going to get taken out. Viper looking to split. He's down to 214 population. Reinforcements are on the way through, but he, he's losing a lot of units and he's losing very fast. Streltsy going to fall back. Where are those reinforcements? Viper didn't wait for all of the units. He just said, you know what? We're going to press the button. We're going to go now. The Marine Lord going to be forcing these units back, but he's still got really huge Huge army. Honestly, at this point, 279. 279 population still for Marine Lord at this point. The defense has been solid. He's got 187 villagers, but he's still falling back. Realizes, you know what? Maybe I should fight with my keep here. Bide my time a little bit. I've still got eight minutes to go on this. The fourth Mangonel comes out. He's looking to try and duck, dip, dive, dodge, and dodge. He manages to find it. Mangonel, big shots. It gets eliminated immediately. And Treb's now moving in, looking to try and do a little bit of English damage there. Not going to be able to find it. No, no shattering projectiles here. And Viper looking to try and push out his enemy, but it doesn't look like it's going to be the case with zero villagers remaining and less than 120 military units. I think this might be it as Marine Lord cleans him up and good game gets called. Marine Lord victorious and Viper tapping out in a bitter fight where our victor, Marine Lord, demonstrate some absolutely amazing control. Beautiful snipes throughout that game. We saw snipe after snipe attempt, very on top of enemy kings, and it just comes out beautifully. An absolute cracker of a game right there. Let's take a look and see what the economic count is looking like. Towards the end, you can see Marine Lord rising to the occasion, 178. And I think the real story there is the takedown of Vortex. Vortex, somewhat distracted with the Viper, didn't have a backup plan, hadn't walled in his king, hadn't put his king in a keep, and he just it just it just went terribly. We take a look now at the at the military count as well. You can see Viper going all the way up to about 220 and then just crashing and burning. Uh, so unfortunate for him, but very well held there by Marine Lord. Fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this casted game. Viper did actually put a one hundred dollar uh he put a hundred dollar bounty on Marine Lord's King, and it looks like that is not going to be claimed this day. So who knows? Maybe maybe next round it will be claimed. Anyway, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.